using footnotes in our markdown documents. Really great thing, really cool, and you got a couple options at your disposal. Now, the footnotes is an addition to Markdown that Pandoc offers, and so because it's Pandoc and we run our Markdown documents through Pandoc, it means we have footnotes at our disposal. So, how do they work? So, the syntax for footnotes is usually square brackets with a caret symbol before them with your content inside of it, and that is a footnote. What will happen is that whatever page that this document um, separates that into, so wherever this text with the footnote is on, at the bottom of that particular page, this footnote will appear and the ordering, you know, the numbers of the footnotes is dynamic and will change if you add or move or change any other footnotes. Now you can specify specific numbers of footnotes and do externally typed footnotes. And what does that look like? So if I was going to go here in my document and add a footnote, I would just do, I have some shortcuts uh, set for this in my snippets file for my R snippets, and that's on GitHub. But I can just do FN for footnote, shift tab. I'm going to do footnote number one. So then for footnote number one, what am I going to add? Well, I'm going to add a footnote detail, FND, shift tab. Footnote one is going to receive the detail of, this is an example, footnote. So notice that footnote one comes before this footnote that does not have a number and all the data is contained within that footnote. So in this case, it's one and then two, but with the details for footnote one are located over here. So when I knit this document, what does this look like? Well, let's wait. Okay, so if I go down to the page, here's ah, footnote one and footnote two. This one is dynamically numbered, but this one is footnote one. Now I think if I remember correctly, I've done this before. If you have additional numbered footnotes, it honestly, the numbers don't matter. It's really just to, the ordering will be, you know, they'll be numbered and displayed here in the order in which they appear, but the numbers will actually coincide with the data that they contain. So that way they don't mix up the data and the references between the footnotes. So I can click one, it'll take me to footnote one here. And with footnote two, I can do that. And it'll take me to footnote two, but with that, um, I think the numbers really are just to like make sure the details match up to the actual reference, but I think that they are just referenced as they appear in the document number-wise. So this is your two options, um, at least as far as I've done, these are two options you can do with footnotes. Um, when I found out about the one where you can just uh, have the inline text citation like this, I just found that that's just so much easier to manage than doing numbers and messing with number references. Just make the footnote, put the reference right there in line, and it's just so much easier to manage. But these are the two types of footnotes that I've found that you have available to you. And I really enjoy using the just the inline one. And it will add it to the bottom of your document automatically for you, number it automatically for you, just like LaTeX figures. Um, I think it's because it it's just running through Pandoc. So this allows you to use like inline LaTeX code. And basically that type of stuff is just a lot of the complexity is just done for you. So there's this. Now, if you use the tough, Tufty package uh, for your documentation, do like an HTML Tufty document, or um, I think it's leaflet or handout something or other um, PDF document, you can actually have your citations appear in the like a side area in the margin, just like the Tufty documentation. Uh, I think that's pretty cool too, especially because you can do it with figures or uh, tables or whatever, and just have like a whole like side column of additional content referenced in your main body content. That's an option. Um, but as far as things go and how I've used it so far, I really enjoy using footnotes like this. Now, one thing to know about the footnotes is that if you use our markdown for your documentation purposes and you use footnotes, if you do this in a HTML document, I think uh, if I remember correctly, all of the footnotes will be grouped at the bottom of the document and be visible on every single page of the document. So you don't have good separation of the footnotes to from page to page to page. And so if you have those like tab pill set things I've talked about before in my other R Markdown videos, um, the footnotes just don't work very well with HTML unless you have a single HTML, single HTML page document and you're only using a single page and or you're using the Tufty package with HTML documents. But anyways, footnotes in R Markdown, they are great, use them.